Hey there. Hey Stampers. Rachel here. I'm just waiting for some more people to join in. How you doing tonight? Where are you watching from? I'm gonna finally show you guys how to make this really really cute treat holder that I talked about. Oh, it's probably been about two weeks ago but a little bit of stuff got in the way so I didn't have time to do my live, live broadcast so I wanted to take time to show you guys how to do this because it's so simple before Christmas gets here so just gonna give a little bit of time just to see if anybody else joins in before we start and then otherwise we will hop in And again, in case you're new, I'm Rachel from reachthestamper.wordpress.com. Let me make sure this is nice and centered so you can see what we're looking at here. Sorry for the little shakes. But we're going to be making this really cute treat box. So you could use this. You can make it many, many different sizes. You can make it tiny. I think this one is like a 6x6 six six piece. This is 6x6, six 7x7. Six, seven seven. It's probably 8x8. Eight and 9 by 9 and this is probably I think 10 and 11 so there's many different sizes that you can make these many different ways if you want to leave the little lips up instead of adhering them down you could do that um, you could also put some adhesive on the bottom of them to put the adhesive underneath of here and you adhere it to this kind of gives a nice little contrast also a great way to see both sides of your designer series paper. So that's pretty cool. And then the other thing you can do, um, I actually got this idea from um, Elaine on Paper Craft Button. She's over in the UK, so in case you're watching, thanks Elaine, but she also did hers. So you could put a little handle on it and then you could kind of give it as a little bit of a, like a gift bag almost. And I know this is red and orange, which really isn't Christmassy. But I do have some little friends of mine's birthdays coming up soon. So I might be giving them this with their treats in it instead. But essentially, you can use any size designer series paper, any kind. You can use Christmas. This is the pine cones and presents. Um, this is the This Christmas specialty designer series paper. So it's a little bit thinner. This is all the same. Again, this one here is pine cones and presents. And then this one I wanted to show you. You can do it just with the... Um, designer series paper stack so this is actually the real red from the brights designer series paper stacks you could use this for any season you could use it for Easter Halloween anything and it's really really fun it's super easy to make and it only requires you to cut your paper to have a bone folder and to have some adhesive and of course a little something to stick in it and then if you want to make one with a lid on the top you're just gonna have um, some pieces of paper I have glimmer paper because I thought it made it a little bit more fun and a coordinating piece of cardstock and then whatever kind of stamp you want or you could put nothing you could do do it blank or you could do it open so completely up to you so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make this it's extremely simple and if you have any questions anybody joins in has any questions please feel free to let me know so what I'm gonna do it with let me see if I can find my leftovers. I think I have a little bit of Candy Cane Lane designer series paper left, which was super fun. This was a really popular one. There are a lot of things that they have right now on the clearance rack. Some are on sale and some are just being discontinued. So maybe we'll use one of these. How about we'll go with this one? So this is the stripes and then the other side has the teeny tiny Christmas trees and the bells and the dots, so that'll be a fun one to use. So, oh, hello from Ontario. Hi, Marion. Nice to see you. Thanks for sticking with me here. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And again, it just depends on how large you want to make it. As long as it's a square, it doesn't make any difference what size you want to use. It's just that you have to have a square piece of paper. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do this one at just a 
How about eight by eight? We'll do eight by eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down because this is the 12 by 12 paper. So you're gonna trim it down to eight by eight and we'll hang on to this so we can make our lid for this one. So again, eight by eight. The only thing you wanna do is you wanna decide which side is going to be your downside. So that, whatever you want facing out, you want facing up towards you. 99% sure, up towards you. So you have your square of paper, decide which side you wanna use. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get your bone folder, just keep that handy. You can crease this most of it on its own, but it's a little bit simpler to do with that. So you're gonna fold it over once. So just a, a regular fold straight across. And then you're gonna open it and you're gonna fold it over again. Okay, just give it a little fold with your bone folder. And then you're gonna fold it over corner to corner and you're gonna actually do this twice because it makes it a little bit easier to bend. So you're gonna give yourself a nice crease on your corner to corner and then you just kinda of wanna fold it back once, okay? Just to get so your crease goes both directions. So now you have your paper with your squares and I'm gonna have mine this way. So I'm gonna fold it in here. So you have your paper with your two squares and your two corners. So, sorry, this is going opposite of the way I wanted it. So you're gonna take your squares and you're gonna fold your corners in so you end up essentially with a square. So kind of like how some people you do the, um, it's called a surprise explosion card. That would be the way you would do that as well. But you're gonna have your little square. So one more time, you're gonna give, just give this a fold down on all the creases. Okay, so you have square, two points, and a square on the bottom. So it's completely identical. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put the opening towards you, so it's facing you. And you're going to fold over, just like so, just to give yourself a crease so you can fold on your lines. And then you're going to fold in from the top to your crease. Oops, I'm sorry, from the bottom to your crease just like that and give yourself a nice crease mark. This is just basically an origami box. So you'll see it as you go along. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the inside. And a couple times I will tell you that I've done this backwards. And the reason I can tell is you want it to essentially when it's done, it's gonna look like a kite. So once we'll flip it over, you'll see what I mean. So you're gonna fold again, flip it over. You're gonna fold make your crease just so you have a line to follow. That's the only reason we're creasing it. And then again, you're gonna fold your bottom corner in to your crease line. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard to follow the design if you have a very busy pattern to see your line. So that's why it's really nice to give yourself a really hard crease. So we fold, folded that one in and then we're gonna fold the final one in. Okay, just like that. Okay, so again, now you have something that looks similar to a kite on both sides. Again, you want both sides to be equal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do, it's called a squash fold. So you're going to open up your little pocket that you've created, and you're going to make sure your line lines up with your corner here. So you're going to push both of those down and just give them a nice press with the bone folder. Same thing again here. Push both of them down. Press with the bone folder. Okay, same thing. Flip it over and we're going to do the same on the other side. And one more to go. Hey, Charlie, thanks for joining. Okay, so now again, you have your same thing. So your opening is still facing towards you. Now the only thing we're going to do at this point is we're going to take this and we're going to fold one of our edges back. Okay, and that's going to be on both sides. You can again go over it with your bone folder if you want to get a nice crease. And we're going to just do the opposite side here as well since we have this open. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to fold this one in and we're going to fold this one in. So now once again you still have your kite. It's just kind of backwards and inside out. So you've now folded both sides over so they're once again symmetrical. The only thing we have left to do now is fold over the edges. So we're gonna fold 
and give a crease, flip it over, fold, and give a crease, and then we're going to open it so we can do the same thing on the other side. Fold it over, crease it, fold it over, crease it, and now everything looks exactly the same on all four sides. Very gently, you're going to stick your fingers in and push the bottom up. It's pretty easy to do with most of the designer series paper, except if you have the specialty paper, because that is a lot thinner and it will rip a little bit easier. This is definitely more difficult to do with the regular card stock, so just beware. So now we have our little box that we've created. Oops. So the only thing you want to do now is decide if you want to put your uh, flaps, if you want to glue them down, so they're going to be closed, or you could keep them open if you like. If you do think you want to close them, what you're going to do is just run your boom folder just to curl the edges. It'll make them stay down a little bit nicer. And you can use your choice of adhesive on this. You could use Fast Fuse if you'd like. Snail is definitely not going to stick very well, so I would either use Fast Fuse. You could use the um, Tombow multi liquid Glue. If you do use that, you definitely have to remember you have to hold on to it a little bit. But just for sake of... Um, so this doesn't drag out forever. I'm going to use tear and tape. So I'm going to just flip this over and we're going to put a little piece on each strip. And then I'll show you if you want to do a lid, how to do the lid. The other thing you could do if you'd like is you could put, trim that a little bit, you could put um, holes in it so you could make it like a little bit of a carrier. If you have any little nieces or nephews, well, not really nephews, if you have any little nieces or any little uh, girlfriends that you give things to, this would be great for them because it's kind of like a little purse with a treat in it, so that works. So after you push your, your tear and tape down, all you're going to do is just hook this down and it's going to stay nice and snug in there. So I'm just going to pull all four sides off and adhere them down. So you can fit lots of little candy treats in here. You could fit gift cards in here. You could also make yourself a little bit of confetti if you wanted to. But as you can see with this one, this has quite a lot of uh, Hershey Kisses in it. So Hershey Kisses. You could fit Giardelli squares in this because they definitely, definitely would fit in size-wise. And then, so if you want to make yourself a little top for it, now this one is a little bit more, has uh, very vanilla in it, so instead of doing the white, I would go with very vanilla. And again, you could use glimmer paper if you want. With your glimmer paper, you can always add color to it if you'd like, so you could use some of your uh, refill from any of your coordinating colors. So even if you wanted to use, for example, some crumb cake, what you do is you take your crumb cake ink pad, and you just drop a couple drops on here, just like so. Take your aqua painter. Is mine full? Yeah. Take your aqua painter, and you kind of want to dilute it a little bit because you definitely don't want it full strength. And then you're just going to slightly paint onto your Dazzling Diamonds cardstock. Spread it out a little bit more. And you can make glimmer paper of absolutely any color that you like. So you definitely want to obviously spread this out a little bit more. So this is kind of just for demonstration purposes, but you're going to spread your ink around and then you can have coordinating glimmer paper to any of the cardstock or any of the uh, Stampin' Up! colors, which is pretty cool. It's just since they don't, they only make some of them in certain colors, so that definitely helps. But what you want to do with your box, let me just get a couple of these out of the way, is you're going to take your Stampin' Trimmer, you're going to do a 3x3 three three square, and you're going to want to have two. So, let's see if we can. And the first one, I really, I will say, it's really not 100% that it needs to be a square, but I'm going to show you anyway. Because what we're going to do is we're going to just put some creases in it. That way we can make a little bottom lid. So what we'll do is, so this will be our top piece, and then we're going to go ahead and score this at about a quarter of an inch on each of the four sides. And now, let me get this out of the way, 
You're going to go ahead and take your snips. Well, let's fold this first. So fold on all the four score lines. Okay, and you're going to want to take your snips. And I like to just trim out a little wedge so it actually closes a little bit better. So you're going to cut on your line, up to the line. And then just trim in just a smidge just to get you a nicer fold when you end up closing it. Just take a little snip out. Okay, and then you can use pretty much any adhesive again. But what I'm going to go with on this one, if I did not lose them somewhere, are, well, of course I did, my mini glue dots. Oh, here they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, mini glue dots just to hold it closed. So we'll put one on each of the four. Okay, and then we're going to just fold this over just to hold this closed on all four sides. Oh, that one didn't get one. Okay, just like that. And then you would take your other piece. So you could use your Project Life Corner Rounder. Just pop the corners off, make it look a little nicer. You don't have to do this. This is optional step, but I think it makes it look a little nicer since this is a pretty rounded box. So what you're going to do is you're going to just put some snail adhesive on the back of this. Obviously, you would already put your greeting on here because you don't want to be stamping onto the top of a flimsy box. So you're going to put your little lid that we've created and you're just going to set that and it should nest right in there. It is going to be a little snug because this box was a little smaller than the first one I made. You can certainly trim this in a little bit if you'd like, but once you'll have your all the rest of your decorative stuff on there, it wouldn't look nearly as odd. So there you go. Even if you wanted to do the glimmer paper, that would look really cute on there as well. But again, this is a really, really simple box to make. If you wanted to make a bunch of them, you could do them really easily. It's a great way to use both uh, sides of your designer series paper, which is sometimes a hard thing that people can't decide which side to use so this is a great way to use both sides or people be able to see both sides you could fit a great amount of treats in there and you can also if you wanted to make the one that had the little string on it so you have like your little bag that you could give your little friend there's a lot of great ribbons you could use the organza ribbon would look, look really nice with this very Christmassy and of course the red stitched edge ribbon is just gorgeous that would look great with this as well and there's also the satin ribbon that will really coordinate well with this just give it a little bit of extra bling since it's a pretty quiet looking box but will be full of treats and that's really all the kids care about if we're being honest right so anyway thanks guys for uh tuning in and taking time to watch i really appreciate it if you have any questions please please feel free to let me know. You can always reach me via email at reachthestamper at gmail.com. You can feel free to stop in my online store. Again, Stampin' Up! is having a really big sale right now, end of the year clearance. That's reachthestamper.stampinup.net. And be sure, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Reach the Stamper. And also, we have another great blog hop coming up this Saturday. It is for New Year's Eve. So a really, really cool New Year's Eve. I am super, super excited to share this card with you guys. I don't want to spoil it because that would just be lame. But it's using the um, Happy New Year. It's, the, it's a celebration stamp set. And I actually have three different versions because I know that Stampin' Up! put a lot of these sales items out. And some things went out of stock. So with my card, there's going to be three versions. One is using the Fancy Frost sequins. These are so pretty. I really hope you like this card as much as I do by the time you see it. And then the other one I used, I did use the Dazzling Diamonds paper on one version of it. And then the other one, I used the Gold Mica Flake. So hopefully between those three things, you'll have something that you can make this really, really fun New Year's Eve card with. So again, if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on the blog, which is rachethestamper.wordpress.com. And that'll be premiering Saturday at 10 a.m. You can leave a comment and be entered to win a really great prize. So thanks for taking time to watch, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a great night.